Bang people, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, go over to Instagram, go over to Twitter, Turkish LDN, subscribe to me on those social media channels. Bringing you another video today, considering Josh Cronkay has come out again. Second time in, what, six weeks to do another interview, which I'm kind of impressed with. I'll, I'll give you my general overall feelings about the interview towards the end. But what I'm going to do right now is um, go through question by question and give you guys my opinion um, throughout the, the interview transcript. So obviously I watched a three minute interview with David Ornstein, but it wasn't the complete interview. So I found the transcript on arsenal.com and I'm just going to look through it and whiz through it as quick as I can because there he has made some good points and he has made some interesting points, which we'll delve a bit more into and I'll give you my opinion on those. But all in all, I'm quite impressed that he's come out again um, to, to talk to us fans, to deliver a message twice in six weeks, coming from not hearing from our owners for years. So there's a welcome change there, but let's get straight into it. And um, he was asked that he seems excited for the new season ahead. Josh Cronkay, I tell our group across all organisations, all of our teams, you're only as good as your last game. Unfortunately, those last 45 minutes in Baku were not our best in the moment. There were a lot of frustration, but there was a collective resolve to not have this feeling again anytime soon. Damn right. Damn right. To get to a major European League um, Cup final and crumble the way we did is typical of Arsenal, but at such a major stage, at such a major event, to do it in front of the world watching just typifies the the period we've gone through in the last decade so I'm glad he's noticed that um, it, it seems a very generic response but he said he was wounded he said it was very tough to describe you never want to put all your eggs in one basket so when you finish the way we did and come up short it's absolute frustration disappointment he said he was positive on the night he said he grabbed Unai he told him we'll be back he talked to a few of the players saying remember the feeling and I actually like that. That's a good motivational technique. At the end of the day, you learn off the negatives, you learn off the losses in life more than you do from the positives and the wins. So that was a major loss. And in terms of leadership, I think that is the right things to be saying. So I'm impressed that he did say those things. I'm impressed that he's come out and he, he seems like a bit of a leader based off what he's saying right now. So let's um, delve further into it. He was asked, you seem to welcome the leadership role, which is what I just mentioned. It's something that I'm comfortable with, he said. I think you can't be a leader without having great people around you, which is true. Um, we've had a lot of transition at the club, 50 new appointments in the last 12 to 14 months. Definitely major change going on behind the scenes. He said, be excited earlier this summer, and he genuinely meant it. It wasn't anything to do with short-term signings, but be excited about the future of the club because he thinks we've got some great people in strong places to do their jobs and do their jobs well. Again, I'm impressed because he could have just said, I told you guys to be excited and look what we've done. Instead, he said, I told you guys to be excited and it wasn't the short-term signings like Pepe, Saliba, Caballos, Tierney. It was about his overall picture of Arsenal Football Club for the next decade. Again, He's saying the right things. I can't lie to you, he's saying the right things. Did Baku sharpen the need for change? Josh says, I think that we were always going to be and we will always be aggressive in trying to improve however we can. Now, the term aggressive, I don't believe we went into the transfer market as aggressive as we could have. But he does go on to say that, obviously, when you reach Europa League, you have to adjust your targets, your um, budget is adjusted a bit. So I guess the work there had to be done to tighten the screws on the budget and, I guess, move away from bigger targets into the level we are currently at at the moment, which is Europa League, which is finishing outside of the top four for the last three years. So it is a difficult position we find ourselves in. I put a lot down to Stan Kroenke, Arsene Wenger and even Gazidis. But here we are in 2019, 2020 season. So let's forget about them and try and, try and look forward and try and find a shy, um, light at the end of the tunnel. So, so let's close that. So let's go further into it. What's he asked here? The perception was the club had no money, but some now say Arsenal won the window. Um, I joked with a few of our colleagues, Kronke said, 
about this topic. And as much as I want to win the conversation in July, I really want to win the matches come May and June. Again, positivity, again, saying the right things. But it sounds like he knows what he's talking about. Like I said, he could have rested on his laurels. He told us, be excited. We signed Pepe. A lot of us were excited. He could have, he could have just said, see, I told you. But he's not. He's expanding it a bit more. He's putting more pressure on himself, which, which I like to see. Because that's exactly what we need. More pressure on the people in the pivotal roles at Arsenal Football Club. Without Champions League football, we weren't exactly sure, but I encouraged our football operations department to be aggressive. And when Arsenal Football Club knocks on a player's door, it's a different knock. He's obviously got this off all the Raul hype on Twitter and stuff. When Arsenal knock, it's a different knock. Listen, don't tell us that, show us that. Because when Arsenal knock, it's definitely been a different knock in the past decade. It's been a light knock. And when someone says they're not in, we just, we just fuck off and don't bother knocking again. Like... Right? That's the knock we've had for the past decade. Yes, this summer we saw a change in targets and a change in approach. But don't tell us it's a different knock. Show us it's a different knock. That's the time it's at. I don't, I, I don't like that comment too much. It's just off the back of Twitter hype and whatnot. But it is what it is. Just show us. How did you do it on such a restricted budget? I'm not going to go too much into detail, but I think the main message was simply to be aggressive. I know I've repeated that a couple of different times, but be aggressive meant a lot of different things. It meant going out and finding what was possible. Because after the match in Baku, we had to rethink a few things again, which is what I just said, so it's understandable. Um, was there any investment from KSC or or, or within the self-sustaining model? This is interesting because Josh goes on to say, I'm not going to go into too much detail. People can read between the lines of being aggressive and what that might mean. That to me means there was investment from KSE. It wasn't just a self-sustaining model funding it. That's the kind of how I would answer that question. It's going to be a private matter for us here at the club, but I hope our fans understand that by being aggressive, that's exactly what we were. So I guess there was some sort of investment potentially Potentially. When I look at the net spend, it looks about 80 something mil, which counters that. And then when you take off the add ons, it goes to about 50 mil. But it looks like they are maybe potentially open to extra investment, potentially open to further improving and further developing the first team squad. So let's see how that goes. Did fan unrest cause you to act in the market? Now, this is something that a lot of people ask me, and a lot of people mention saying, Oh, you did help out with your protest at the kit launch. Listen, I, I don't know whether it helped or not. I just did what I believe was right. Same with the We Care Do You people, although they've got a couple of mugs there that believe it's a secret society that they've created. Um, I'm fully supportive of any pressure on um, Stan Kroenke and KSC for the good of Arsenal Football Club. So what he replied was, I would say that if you're reacting and doing club record signings based on public opinion, you're not going to go very far as a club. So essentially, he's dismissing anything. If he saw the kit launch, he's dismissing that. I'm sure he saw the hashtag we care do you. He's dismissing that. He's essentially saying that don't listen to the fans. They need a plan, a structure. To an extent, I understand, but you need to respect the fans. That's for sure. If you don't respect the fans, it's one thing not listening, but it's another thing not respecting. So there's a fine line there that he needs to make sure he doesn't cross. Because at times, in his, this interview and in the other interview, he does nearly cross that line into a bit of disrespect. He, like here, he's dismissing the fan base a bit. But further on, it was unfortunate that the summer unfolded publicly the way it did with some of the supporters groups. I tried to answer some of their concerns to the best of our ability, but we had instruments in place behind the scenes heading into the window where we knew we were going to be aggressive and we weren't going to be reactive to anything. This aggressive stuff, I need to see more of it. I need to see more proactive approach going into next summer. I expect a, a, a better approach. I expect um, a couple of signings to be wrapped up early to get preseason under their belts to really help and finish off the final touches needed into this squad defensively, structurally, and really start making an impact into the Premier League. Arsenal haven't made an impact in the title challenge for a long, long time. You could argue the Leicester season, but that dwindled in March. So for me, it's about getting us back to challenging seriously for major runners. 
there are certain moments in time. Sometimes these moments are sooner, sometimes these moments are later in the window. We identified a few key targets, worked on those deals over time, and we were able to execute them. I hope that our fans are just as excited as I am about the upcoming season, and I believe that the majority of us are excited. We've got some talented new players in. We do at an age profile where they're going to grow and improve on the pitch. I agree. I agree. And over the next eight, ten, eight to ten months or so, I'm well into the future. An ex exciting time to be an Arsenal supporter. <coughs> I guess it is considering we've spent the most money we've ever spent in a window. But again, it's, it's all good and well saying it. Continue doing it. Continue exciting us. Uh, exciting a fan base is not just a one window job it's a job for every single window every single year um, that's the responsibility of a club they need to excite fans they need to develop the football on the pitch they need to make sure that we're going in the right direction oh look here's the question it, it was one thing saying be excited another to deliver it we were fortunate to be able to close on a few deals it's never fun to be left at the altar per se when I made that statement about being excited, there were a few things that were starting to come about. Fair enough. So he knew, obviously, when the hashtag We Care Do You came about, he knew that Pepe was um, being worked on. I guess he knew Tierney was being worked on, which we all did. I guess he had a plan. So that's why he came a bit confident with his interview um, last month in July. He was very confident, at times smug. Again, dismissed the We Care Do You protest by saying, I believe we are going in the right direction. But in the end of the day, he has excited us um, going into the season. So let's see if he continues to back up these words of his. Let's see. Criticised in the past for not filling needed positions. Now seeing a more decisive Arsenal. I wouldn't say we were more decisive. I think it's just a different structure. I've been part of meetings that were with Arsene Wenger. And I've been a part of meetings now that include our head of football, managing director, head coach, new technical director. It's a different approach. It's not doing anything different to what we've done in the past, but I think when we have different opinions and you share these opinions in a very direct manner, you might disagree, but as soon as the door opens and you walk out, your back as a unified front. Fully agree with that. At times, it got so stale under Arsene Wenger. He wanted to dictate and dominate every part of Arsenal Football Club. He didn't want any assistance. He didn't want a structure around him. He wanted to be the master of it all. And in the end, it was his downfall. It was his downfall. Between that and protecting Stan, Arsene Wenger's finished. But yeah, more departures before foreign windows close. Josh says he'd defer to our football operation staff, which is the correct thing to do. Obviously, you can't say for sure whether Mustafi's leaving. You can't say for sure whether El Nene's leaving. You can't say for sure whether Ozil's leaving. But I guess you just have to direct it to the football operation staff. Cool. Is your father happy with the summer business and direction of the club? I bet what this answer is going to be. Let's see. He is thrilled. He sure he is. As we've had a chance to get to know some of the new faces more and more behind the scenes and he's had a chance to be around him individually, he's only excited. I know that term has probably been worn out this summer, especially from myself, but we're all very excited. Saying the right things again. I don't believe Stan gives a shit. He hasn't shown that he's given a shit. At least Josh, in the past year or so, he's shown some... Some qualities, something that we can look and get some inspiration and hope from. So with Stan, I, I doubt he's thrilled. I just think he's just letting Josh get on with it now. And Josh is saying the right things. And so far, and this summer, done the right things. Um, long may it continue. There's some key players going into the final two years of their contracts. Is it decision time? I guess it's referring to maybe Messi Ozil, Alexander Lacazette, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Very key players. Um, on the downturn of their contract. With Ozil, we're going to let that run down 120%. I assume he's going to go America off the back of these threats. Ozil is not a tough guy. He's going to crumble and he's going to want to leave and, and the safety of his family is paramount, I guess. So he'll be off to America in a year or so. So Josh's response, that's 100% on our football ops department. But I would say whatever we're doing, we're going to be aggressive, decisive, and we're going to communicate well and honestly. Yep, the right stuff. You're saying the right stuff. It's about doing it. So let's see it in action. One contract that needs addressing is Emery's. How happy are you with him? Josh goes on to say, I think he's doing a great job. 
turning the page from such a legendary manager not only at Arsenal but in European football was always going to be difficult which is true especially the longevity that um, Wenger had especially the dictatorship he had at this club structurally and especially considering how stale Arsenal Football Club got underneath um, Arsene Wenger and Gazidis. I think Unai's daily approach is fantastic. He's out there on the pitch working, he's watching videos, communicating and his daily energy and devotion to his work is fantastic. It's exactly what we need. I think you can kind of tell Emery's definitely a more active manager than our previous. So again, that falls hand in hand. What would constitute success this season? Challenging for the title is always our goal. That's what we talk about constantly. Obviously, yeah, but not this season. Based on the strength of our league, which is the greatest in the world, if you're competing for the title, you're competing elsewhere for other silverware. Whether that's the Premier League, the FA Cup, European, fair enough. Our work has already started and I'm thrilled to be in the group that. So he, he kind of didn't really answer that question. Obviously, at Arsenal Football Club, we need to be challenging for the title, but I think Josh needs to understand that even us as fans know that a success this season is top four, 100%. Top four or the Europa and the Europa League, either or, um, that's a successful season for us. It's all about getting back into Champions League, getting that extra money, getting that extra income and really becoming a more attractive proposition for these players across Europe. Is the squad capable of challenging this season? We're going to have our work cut out, Josh says. There are some very strong teams ahead of us, starting with the defending champs and the Champions League winners. We've come back with a stronger squad than we finished in May. I'm excited. They're ready to get to work. He's saying the right stuff, but again, he didn't really answer the question, beating around the bush. Essentially, I'll answer it for him. We won't be challenging for the title this season. But I'm hopeful on top four. I actually believe we will get top four. Especially with the uplifting spending, do Arsenal need to return to Champions League? That's obviously something we talk about. There are six great clubs in the league and unfortunately only four spots that are guaranteed for CL. That's a goal of ours, the economics involved to be able to reinvest back into the club, attract different players. Essentially what I've just said is vital. It is vital and that constitutes success for us this season, getting back into Champions League. The, re the relationship between Arsenal fans and ownership has at times been strained. How beneficial could it be if they're united behind the team? I feel like this is more direct to people like me. It would be one of the most powerful, powerful things that I probably would have, probably the most powerful thing that I ever would have witnessed. Passion can go a couple of different ways and from a fan perspective, you're only as good as your last match. But knowing the passion of Arsenal support or community, it would be an incredible sight to behold. Being here on match days, it gives me the chills even just thinking about it. But to know that supporters are united behind the group would be a very powerful thing. Again, you're saying the right stuff about powerful and this and that, but I think at this point he needs to make, like, he needs to highlight that they haven't done right in regards to fans over the last decade. So it's about changing the perception on their part. Yes, it will be a powerful thing if we was all united and behind the team and behind the cause and understanding where we're going. But the reason we're not is because of KSC, Josh. It's because of Stan. It's because of Wenger, Gazidis. It's because of the ownership. So it's all good and well saying it's powerful, but come on, mate. Come on, mate. At times, it feels like your father's been public enemy number one. Is it an aim of yours to build that relationship between the ownership and fan base? That's important, Josh says. They need to understand who we are and what we're trying to accomplish. It's important for them to try and understand our personalities as people because at the end of the day, we're fans. Stan is not a fan, Josh. Stop feeding this rhetoric because he's just a businessman. Let's be honest. You might be a fan, but he is just a businessman. I'm not even going to continue there. Is KSC here to stay? Are you looking to drive Arsenal forward? Absolutely. Absolutely. So much for Kronke. <laughs> I'm thrilled to be involved with the club. Thrilled to be involved with all these great people. On the weekends here, just the environment is something that you can't really duplicate anywhere else. Okay, environment, cool people, good. Let's just start competing. When I tell my friends that are from the States, if they're travelling through Europe, I, I automatically try to get them into the Emirates because they need to experience it. Oh, that's all good and well. That's all good and well. Let me just skip that anyway, man. You KSC are here to stay. That's what I took out of that question. Do you intend to continue investing in January and beyond? And what is your vision? Good question. We have the highest of ambitions in North America. We are trying to win. The Rams were in the Super Bowl last year. I can only imagine what a Champions League final is like after being over in Baku. 
can only imagine will make it happen, Josh. You're in a position to make this shit happen. We want to win and we want to win as much and as often as possible. As for January, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. We've got to evaluate some things in the short term and figure out where we might need to address areas going forward. So when January does roll around, we're going to be proactive again. I like it. I like it. Putting pressure on yourself again. You haven't rested on your laurels off the back of Be Excited and Nicolas Pepe. You're putting more pressure on yourself and I actually love it. Any regrets as owners? Anything you would have done differently? Josh says, I don't have any regrets. If you, do, if you have regrets, I think it's just simply over match results. You always wish you could go back and change certain things. Probably the lowest point since I've been involved with the club was over in Baku. Because you work so hard for that moment and then come, to the, come short at the very last minute. It leaves a feeling for me that feeling is motivation. That's a good response. That's a good response because there's a difference. Some people could put their heads down and let it affect them for the rest of their lives. Some people bounce back and are motivated to get one step further the next season or the season after that. How passionate are you about Arsenal? What does your fandom look like when you're not at a match? It depends on the time. Obviously, being in America, it's all, it's all skewed over there. I usually go at least downstairs because my girlfriend will kill me if I turn that game on at half four in the morning. But whether it's half four, six, ten in the morning or early afternoon, I'm usually pretty vocal. My dogs get a little scared. If something goes wrong, I yell a little bit. But let's see a little match day vlog from you, Josh, innit? Point the video out yourself and let's see your reaction. <laughs> but the passion comes out in all different ways. I think our group here on the football operations side, they'll tell you that I get a little animated. Yeah, you're just waxing lyrical about yourself now. So down to the end, what's your final message to the supporters? <laughs> I would say be excited. Surprise, surprise. But I'm glad he's saying it again. The first time he said it, it was kind of condescending. But we was excited come the end of the transfer window. He's still saying be excited. So again, he's not resting on the laurels of what he just accomplished with Pepe, Tierney and, and whoever else. So I'd say be excited, but I've already worn that one um, out over the summer. But I would just say to our supporters, it's going to be fun. We've got some talented new players for them to cheer on the pitch and we're going to keep working hard on their behalf. But that rounds it up. Um, what I like about that interview, yes, it's on Arsenal.com, but it's from David Ornstein, um, someone that is in the know regarding Arsenal stuff. It's not direct from Arsenal Football Club, so the questions are not tailored um, and are not generically answered by Josh. It's a bit more, I'd say it's a bit more real than the interview we saw and heard in July. Now, the main thing, like I said, I'm generally happy that her owner is coming out twice in six weeks to talk to us. It's very refreshing. And I'm even happier that you can see motivation. You can see the willingness to change. You can see, you're hearing all the right stuff. Proactive. How many times have I said that over the last year? Arsenal need to be more proactive. And that's what he's saying. We need to be more aggressive. We need to stamp our authority. When Arsenal knock, it should be a different knock. It hasn't been, but it should be a different knock. So let's make that happen. Champions League football, it seems like he knows that um, the, the, our hopes are all aligned there, that we need Champions League football back this season. That, is, um, that constitutes success. He was asked, and that constitutes success. Not a Premier League challenge, but getting top four. And if we can secure it earlier and if we can be in a, in a um, demanding, confident position come February, March, then, then that option for an extra year for Emery has to get taken, in my opinion, has to get taken. But all in all, I'm happy he's come out again. All in all, he's saying the right stuff. He's done the right stuff towards the end of the transfer window. It looks like he's fully in control now compared to Stan. It's just refreshing to hear from him again. Do you know what I mean? When I woke up and I, and I heard Josh has done another interview, I thought, oh yeah, he's going to rub it in our faces that we was protesting and this and that. And um, we spent the most ever. But no, he hasn't really done that. Credit to him, he hasn't really done that. He was condescending in his interview in July, but this one here, he's kind of opened up a bit more. Told us what we want to hear, um, which also puts pressure on himself. Telling us what we want to hear, we need to see it now. So the pressure, again, is back to him. The pressure is always going to be on the Cron case for, for the meanwhile because of how we've been run and um, my perception of them as a family, as a business. But if they continue doing the good work and building on the good work that we've done as a business and as a football club at the end of the transfer window, then 
the pressure will will cease. I won't say it will die, but it will cease because there's always pressure on owners to rebuild, restructure, invest. Do you know what I mean? The pressure on our owners is to fix what they fucked up over the years. But it seems that we're going in the right direction. I'm happy that we've got an owner now that's, well, it's still stand, but Josh is in control of things. He's coming out to talk to us a bit more. Hopefully he keeps the same energy if things are not going so well this season. It's all good and well to come out after a positive transfer window and two back-to-back -back wins. But will he come back if we went on to lose against Liverpool and lose against Tottenham? Would he come back if we was out of the top six in November? That's the time we're going to need to see a figure talking to us and explaining to us what the plan is. Because far too often at Arsenal Football Club, we've been left as fans to just think and just not understand what the hell is happening at our club. So hopefully that's a welcome change coming. Josh, um, I like what I hear. You lot tell me in the comments below, what do you think? Are you happy with that interview? Is he pulling the wool over our eyes again? For me, I'm happy with the interview. For me, I'm happy that we've got someone coming out to talk to us a bit. Whether it's bullshit or not, we'll find out soon and we'll adhere to it as we find out. But yeah, let me know in the comments below what you think about Joshin's interview and appreciate all the love, appreciate all the comments, appreciate all the feedback, everything. Keep it up, people. Keep it up. Love.